Elizabeth Clare Prophet preaches the everlasting gospel and brings to you the true teachings of Jesus Christ and the illumination of the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. This evening we celebrate the light of the transfiguration and we invoke transfiguring change for each and every one of you. Beloved Jesus has taught us that each one must seek for and find the transfiguring light. This begins with a meditation upon the light, establishing a very profound oneness with God the Father, who is represented in this chart as the mighty I Am Presence, the presence of God with you always. The power of this presence to deliver this light to you is stupendous. You have but to open the door of your heart and call for light to receive that power that is the power to transfigure. Let us think upon the moment when Jesus took Peter, James, and John and was transfigured before them. That transfiguration was a prelude to his resurrection and his ascension. It was the celebration of the light in his heart, filling all his temple, all of the cells of his being. And so it is written in the book of Mark, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. This is a tremendous prophecy of the power of God's light with us today. It means that we need not pass through the transition called death before we have received and internalized the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is his consciousness. It is all light, all power, all wisdom, and all love. It is the Trinity in manifestation, which you also have as the threefold flame in your heart. Thus the transfiguring light of God intensifies his kingdom within us, intensifies and increases the magnitude of the divine spark, which is the spark of divinity, soon to become the full manifestation of Christ within you. This Mark wrote as the first verse of the ninth chapter of his gospel, preceding his description of the transfiguration. After six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into an high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. This is the marvelous passage that we find in the New Testament that gives to us an understanding of the term ascended master one who has walked the earth and mastered the elements and time and space. Truly Moses, as well as Elijah, come under this dispensation. Both walked the earth, performed miracles, and were the instrument of God's word, his prophecy, and his law. Thus, where have they gone? We need not wonder any longer, for in the moment when Jesus takes the disciples into a high mountain, raising their consciousness. He opens heaven and shows 
that there are those in heaven who even preceded the ascension of our Lord, who are the masters of wisdom of all ages and eternity. These are the immortals. These are our leaders and our teachers, and we follow them by going and doing likewise, by expecting, as Jesus told us, that if we believe that the light of God is in them, when they are consummated in that light, they with God, through our own Christ's self, will perform the same works and greater works, multiplying the light and increasing it in every age and dispensation. So here we have the affirmation, the confirmation of the apostles themselves, that they saw ascended masters witnessing unto the exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Peter, to be sure, made known to Mark, who wrote down the gospel, even the very words he spoke in this event. And therefore we do see that Peter wanted all to know of the presence of Moses and Elijah so much so that he would have built an altar to them. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. The cloud is the same cloud of Sinai, the same power of the I am that I am, the cloud that enfolds your I am presence that is depicted in this chart as rings upon rings of light radiating the rainbow rays of God. The cloud appeared to the children of Israel, leading them onward, and always enveloped Moses on the mountain when he communed with God. The cloud also envelops you when you are one with God in prayer and meditation. You may not see it, but it is there, the glory of God enfolding you in the presence of love. Thus it was the Father, God the Father who spoke to them, signifying his approbation of Jesus' mission, speaking out of the cloud of the I am that I am, commanding the students to listen to their teacher, the beloved Son of God incarnate. And thus the Father ordained the relationship of master and disciple on earth. And we, the disciples of Jesus Christ, pursue that oneness with our master as students, learning to put on the cloak of his Christhood, learning as he teaches us by his Holy Spirit, for he told us that he would send us the Comforter who would teach us all things, reminding us, bringing to our remembrance whatsoever I have taught you. This moment of the oneness of God the Father, the Son, the disciples, the ascended masters, will forever be unto us the understanding of the saints robed in white, of the great mystery of the great white brotherhood, ascended masters, and unascended disciples. Suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man any more, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, 
questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. Here we see what we would call a miracle, but what is the science of God to exalt, to elevate, to raise the consciousness, the perception of the soul, to see the glory of God as a foretaste of heaven, to realize that Moses and Elijah were people like themselves who had human frailties and burdens and fears, whom God called and empowered with his spirit, and they became extraordinary men, carrying the burden of the Lord, the mantle of his light. And they walked the earth, and with Elijah's mantle, Elisha smote the river Jordan, and God parted the Red Sea for Moses. All of these things God is able to do through one he may anoint and use unto his purpose. You are here to receive the message that God can raise you up and use you at any moment of the hour of the day or of the night when there is a need. Jesus, Elijah, and Moses had one thing in common. They prepared themselves to be instruments. They expected to be instruments. And they gave themselves to that calling as God's servants and all of us desiring to be better servants each day. We come together then to consider the mystery of healing, the mystery of the transfiguration, and we know that Jesus said, The Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Jesus gave us his word to perform his work, and therefore we affirm the word to increase the light of the presence of God with us. We would capture the light of Sinai and the light of the Mount of transfiguration. This evening, we seek healing by the power of the flame of the transfiguration, glistering white, so white that when it fills your aura, even your garments will shine. Preparing the vessels to receive that light, we call to the Holy Spirit for the violet flame. It is the cup of Easter communion. It is the wine of forgiveness. It is Jesus breaking the bread with us. The gift of the violet flame fills all of the promises of God in the Old and New Testament, erasing the records of sin so that even God can say, I will remember their sin no more. As we prepare to make healing invocations, let us give the simple affirmation of the heart, head, and hand decrees. The heart, the head, and the hand are your trinity of life in manifestation. Heart, head, and hand in balance, give you the power of Christ in the heart, the mind of the Father in the head, and the Holy Spirit in action. So the trinity of your threefold flame in balance is the means whereby you walk up that mount of transfiguration. We call to the violet flame to purify and intensify the light of the heart. Together. Violet fire, thou love divine, blaze within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. Keep me always in tune with you. Violet fire, thou love divine, blaze within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true. 
keep me always in tune with you. Violet fire, thou love divine, blazed within this heart of mine. Thou art mercy forever true, keep me always in tune with you. The power of the violet flame will intensify in your heart if you visualize it. In the very point of the third eye, at the brow of the forehead, there is your inner sight focused. So you go within and you visualize your physical heart with a violet flame, a veritable fire that is purple and violet and pink blazing within. It blazes without the heart until you can feel the burning in your heart chakra of the power of the Holy Spirit. This flame of the Holy Spirit melts, transmutes, dissolves the fears that come upon the heart, the burdens of the day, hardness of heart, ancient records that stand between you and your God. Some of you have seen images of the sacred heart of Jesus or the sacred heart of Mary depicted with a flame burning in the heart. That's the idea. The beautiful sacred fire that is the devotion of the saints can be yours. Jesus and Mother Mary sanctified their hearts to reveal to you that you also have a fire in the heart which can be expanded. Now having established the flame within the heart, let us concentrate our visualization of the violet flame in the head. This is for the purification of three chakras which we have in this part of the body. The power center is known as the throat chakra, the gift of the word and the power of the word in speech. The crown chakra at the very top of the head is the point of wisdom and illumination and the third eye at the brow. All of these essential for the expansion of the flame of God. Now we desire the violet flame to pass through the mind, to clear the debris of all concepts that are not clear, truthful, or founded on the science of being. The apostle wrote, let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The violet flame is the means whereby the mind of God can come into manifestation within you. I am light, thou Christ in me, set my mind forever free. Violet fire forever shine, deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire, fill my head till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am light, thou Christ in me, set my mind forever free. Violet fire forever shine, deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire, fill my head till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am light, thou Christ in me, set my mind forever free. Violet fire forever shine deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire, fill my head till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. I am like the Christ in me, set my mind forever free. Violet fire forever shine deep within this mind of mine. God who gives my daily bread with violet fire fill my head till thy radiance heaven light makes my mind a mind of light. Now let us visualize the intense action of the violet flame passing through our hands. You have centers of healing in your own hands 
Visualize the violet flame burning in the center of each palm. The laying on of hands taught by Jesus and the apostles was given so that the hands as two, Alpha and Omega, could conduct the healing light to one sick, bereaved, burdened. The conducting of that light through the hands has an origin and a source. It comes directly from the fire of the heart, directed by the fire of the mind. But these are not self-generating. They are the unfed flame which come from the very heart of God, whose presence you visualize as the I am that I am depicted in this chart. Thus, through the presence of God, there is a release of light over the crystal cord. And over that descending cord, there is a perpetual flow of this river of life. It is the light of your life stream, the stream of your consciousness, your self-awareness, and your being that has always been and ever shall be hid with Christ in God this perpetually flowing fount of sacred fire is your life your energy and your consciousness from god as beloved sons and daughters of god your temple is intended to be the temple of the holy spirit as jesus and the apostles taught you have free will you may call upon god to use your life stream your temple, your heart and soul, to transmit the light of your I am presence to those in need. Thus, with heart full of love, with a head understanding the wisdom of God, and the hands as the instrument of the transfer, you may affect the same healing light and currents that pass through Elijah, Elisha, Joshua, Moses, Jesus, and the apostles and many saints who have had the gift of the transference of the transfiguring light now let us affirm i am the hand of god in action please visualize intensely the violet flame burning in your hands hold them as cups and see the hands holding these flames of the holy spirit I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My pure soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My pure soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. I am the hand of God in action, gaining victory every day. My pure soul's great satisfaction is to walk the middle way. Now let us take the decree to the transfiguration. I am changing all my garments, old ones, for the bright new day. With the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within without. I am light is all about. Fill me, free me, glorify me. Seal me, heal me, purify me. Until transfigured they describe me. I am shining like the sun. I am shining like the sun. It is a wonderful moment when you realize that you can change your old garments, old habits, old manifestations, and you can put on the garment of the living Christ. This is part of the ritual of God's forgiveness, his manifestation of ultimate mercy. Let us give it together now with great joy. I am changing all my garments, old ones, for the bright new day. With the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within without, I am light is all about. Fill me, free me, glorify me, seal me, heal me, purify me. 
Until transfigured they describe me I am shining like the sun I am shining like the sun I am changing all my garments Oh, and for the bright new day With the sun of understanding I am shining all the way I am light within without I am light is all about Fill me, free me, glorify me See me, hear me, purify me Until transfigured they describe me I am shining like the sun I am shining like the sun I am changing all my garments, old ones, for the bright new day. With the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within without. I am light is all about. Fill me, free me, glorify me, seal me, heal me, purify me. Until transfigured they describe, I am shining like the sun. I am shining like the sun. You are shining in the likeness of your mighty I am presence, the sun of your own true being. And like the Son of God, your own Christ self, the great mediator between God and man as your manifestation of that God. At this time, it gives me great joy to be able to make invocations in your behalf for your personal healing for that of loved ones, or for your cities and nations, or conditions around the world that you would like to bring to our attention and to this altar. The preceding public access program has been presented through the assistance of Church Universal and Triumphant, Box A, Malibu, California, 90265. If you would like to know more, call this number or write this address. Be sure to ask for your free book, Understanding Yourself, The Doorway to the Superconscious.